your life doesn't end up an accident. Your life is a series of actions that you initiate or don't initiate. And that your thoughts are going to control that roadmap. And so, how are you using your mind today to either make yourself feel great or not? Listen, your destiny is ultimately controlled by a decision you already made this morning. Everyone watching this already made a decision this morning. This morning, they made it a life-changing, huge decision this morning. And that is either I'm gonna get up, enter the world with no intention, go through the motions to hopefully get by or survive, or I am going to get clear in this morning about what I want, what I'm going after, who I'm going to be, and whether or not I'm going to be excellent and extraordinary or not. And the problem is most people never make that conscious decision. So I was learning early on, make the conscious decision about who you want to be each day. Stay congruent with that. And that was, you know, for me, a kid who's just going through the motions, all of a sudden going, oh, who do I want to be? And then I started setting personal challenges every month. At the beginning of each month, I do this whole thing where I holistically evaluate my life on the first of every month. And it's like these 10 different categories of my life, you know, from emotional to relational to financial to, um, you know, career, mission, objectives, all these things. And then I set a personal challenge and a professional challenge. And I do that every month. Every Sunday, I revisit my progress. Every Sunday. For 23 years. So it's not like I'm just, you know, one day ended up in a happy life. It was like, that a level of self-evaluation that most people avoid until their birthday or New Year's, I do it every Sunday and every first of the month, and I don't ever miss. And I think that has helped me kind of know what my thing is, because I don't think I'm super special. It's like, what I help people do, seek clarity. The only reason I get to work with all these people you mentioned is because they're at a new level in their life where they're going, what is it now for me? And I help them kind of figure that out. Like, what is it now for you about how you want to define yourself? What is it that you want to develop as a skill sets? And what is the specific service you want to provide? For the Sunday thing, it's really self-evaluative and very planning oriented. So it's like, where am I? What do I need to do this week, this month? And just checking with my calendar. Most people don't have a calendar. So that's problem number one. They're not strategically blocking time moving towards the major things they want in their life. They, they won't say they're going through the motions, but the calendar reveals it. Like if I parachute in their life and I open up their calendar and there's nothing there, they can't possibly say that they're living with purpose or intention. And that sounds so flippant to say, but I can't believe how many people, they're not planning their skill set development. They're not planning specific goal attainment on certain dates. They're just like their calendar is completely empty and they're hoping it's going to happen. And it's like, if you look at mine, it's like, it's like military-esque like planning. Like I'm going to hit these goals. It's going to happen. Um, I also, every morning, lay in bed and I visualize what I want. And I see, like when I, first when I wake up, I literally just lay there for an extra two, three, four minutes and I just kind of visualize and I'm thinking about the things that I want. So that happens every morning. The second visualization I do in the morning comes later. So I get up in the morning, I drink 20 ounces of water. I do 20 minutes of mobility, movement and stretching every morning. Then I read for 20 minutes something positive. For me, it's almost always a self-help book or a leadership book, almost always. Sometimes a business book, almost always self-help and leadership. Read that book. Then I go and I sit down with my high performance planner, my green tea. I fill out the day, right? I look at the blocks of time that are already scheduled. And then what I do is my second visualization, which is I look at the major blocks of time that have been scheduled and I close my eyes and I think, how do I do that thing with excellence? What would make that thing special? So I literally close my eyes and I visualize those blocks of time. And how would I do them well? That's a superpower. Most people write their day out and they just go about the day and then they, sometimes they come back to the plan and they go, oh my God, I didn't even do it. Because I sit there and I think about, how do I do that well? That's a game changer. The world completely underestimates the power of visualization. Completely uh, misutilizes the human power of contemplation. 
the number one thing I say to my high performance clients is going through the motions is the death of high performance. High performers don't go through the motions. Yeah, I think they've contemplated, they've, they're intentional, they're thoughtful, they practice, they, 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 they want it to go well. And the reason most people don't do that is because the pressure, it puts a lot of pressure on yourself, but that's what makes people great. The human brain has this incredible capacity for guilt. And most people unconsciously let that roll over them and kick their butt and make a horrible life. I love guilt. Guilt is a tool. Guilt is a weapon. Guilt does not have to be a bad thing. It's not like I perpetuate, but I'm like, I love that I feel bad when I don't do a good job. Most people hate that about themselves. I love that feeling. I'm like, I didn't do a good job there. Next time I will. So some people, guilt is discouragement. Other people, it's a signal for learning. To me, guilt is a signal for learning. It is the body and the brain, the spirit, knowing what is right, knowing what is wrong, knowing what's great, knowing what's mediocre. And it's saying, hey, do a little better. Now, if it's translated into a negative impulse, then some people call it guilt. But I'm like, I'm totally cool with guilt. I, you know what, I think it's good that we feel bad when we do something that is below our standard or that's not right. Because that impulse to go, I want to do that better. And that impulse, that desire to learn and drive and do better is something that doesn't always feel good because it says also, I kind of screwed up over there. But when you can dispassionately recognize your performance and go, I actually want to become great at this, all of your psychological and spiritual energies kind of align a little bit to saying, let's grow then. Most people are half-hearted, half-interested, half-engaged in their actual dream and actual ambition because they either fear it or they feel insecure or incapable. Instead, people apologize for their ambition, hide their ambition. You have to learn to own your ambition, speak of the ambition, chase the ambition, drive the ambition, and lead the ambition. The further you are from your ambitions, the more miserable you are. And most people don't even look at their goals every day. So no wonder we have a world that says I'm disconnected. It's like, no, wake up. Like, I ask people all the time, did you look at your goals today? That's a simply, that's literally personal development 101 is have goals, look at them. Most people do not do that. I want you to deeply visualize, feel, sense, and talk about your ambitions way more. People who are scared to communicate about their ambitions are cheating themselves in the world from supporting them. That's number one. Number two, you have to have daily intention and habit tracking. You, you, you can't leave your personal development to randomness. And what most people do, they leave their personal growth to randomness, and so they're always in the land of mediocrity. You have to have that morning routine and that evening routine of evaluating where you are and where you wanna go and asking the hard questions of what is it about me that's not moving forward? What is it about me that I need to accept, love, care for, take care of, do a better job with? How do I treat other people so I can get ahead faster? What do I need to focus on? If you don't do that on a daily basis, you're going through the motions. And even if you're successful, imagine how much more successful you would be if you were way more intentional and you actually tracked your habits. I know how easy it is to go through a day, you hustle all day, and you crash at the end of the day. I know the 100 hour work weeks, I know how that feels, I know what that's about. But if you're doing all of that and you're not aware, that leads to a nightmare. That leads to you take the wrong path and you're hustling down the wrong path, you lean the ladder against the wrong building, you do the wrong thing. The awareness on the daily is something people need to build into a routine and physicalize, like write, not a note on your phone, Journal, workbook, planner, something that you actually connect pen to paper, you think through. And if we can get you ambition, clarified ambition, speak the ambition, own the ambition, and you're actually intentional in tracking each day, you win this game.